Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to discuss a little bit about Docker, which is a very popular tool you would have heard if you're a backend developer or if you have done a little bit of work with production environments or anything, any sort of stuff which involves some sort of production, you would have heard about containerization and how you should always run your applications in a container based environment, even locally sometimes. So in this video, I want to give you a quick under the hood picture of how Docker really works, not getting into a lot of technical details, but just enough for you to appreciate what Docker does under the hood. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Okay, so in order to understand how Docker really works, we first have to understand how Linux works in general. So again, like I said, not going into a lot of details. If you have a Linux operating system, you obviously have a kernel and this kernel is a piece of software which handles all the low level operations of your operating system and management. For example, the CPU, the RAM, the IO, the allocation for those things is handled by the kernel, the Linux kernel. Now, Linux kernel has certain, you can think of APIs for a lack of better word, if you're a web developer, you can think of these as an APIs, which are a couple of them are C groups and namespace. So these two things actually are the heart of how Docker or Docker containers or containers in general on Linux really work. And these APIs are only available on Linux. They are not available on Windows. So this is why you would see that Docker is natively not available on Windows. That means when you're running Docker on Windows, what it's really doing is running a very thin Linux virtual machine on Windows and then basically that's how it is able to run on Windows, right? So these C group and namespace functionalities are only available on Linux kernel. Now that is fine, but what do they really do? Well, you see that these two things, the C group one, first of all, let's discuss about this. C group, what it does is that it gives you as a developer the ability to interact with the kernel in such a way that you are able to limit a process by CPU, RAM, file system, IO, network, whatever you can think of, right? Now, let's, let's hold on here a bit and take a look at what do I mean by that. Let's say you are running a Node.js server. This is a Node.js server inside of a Docker container, right? What you can say to this particular container over here is that, hey, I'm gonna give you only one GB of RAM and one core of the system at max, right? And this could be running on a 64 GB system and eight core system, let's say. So the way you say that, hey, this container only and only gets this these many resources is through this functionality, which is known as C group, right? And this is implemented inside Linux kernel. So all Docker does when you're trying to create this container with these limited constraints is that Docker would say to the kernel via the C group feature that, hey, I'm gonna create this container, I'm gonna create this process. And again, remember that containers are process. So I'm gonna create this process over here and I want to allocate only this much resource or this much cores or RAMs or IO speed or network speed or whatever it is to that particular process. And then it is the responsibility of kernel to make sure that it is enforced on the system, right? So in short, C group enforces the most of the common things you know. Then what does this namespace, which is the other thing, again, part of the Linux kernel do? So namespace is also an interesting thing because namespace allows to abstract your container or you know to hide your container from other containers now what do i mean by that if you're a c or c plus plus developer you might have kind of came across namespaces where you write using namespace std something like that right so you might be able to relate using that but obviously it's it's a it's like a different thing but namespaces in general mean that you create an abstraction or you create a boundary between multiple containers, right? So you have another container maybe running inside here, 
it's like a node this is a container and this might be running in its own namespace right then you could have a third container fourth container and so on so what does this do is that let's say this application just this node.js application is listening on port 80 inside this container right again this application could also be listening on port 80 inside this container and the reason they are able to listen on the same port inside their containers is because they are running in a different namespace right obviously their cpu ram file system usage is, is controlled by the c group functionality but the resources they can access for example this container cannot just directly access the file system of this container and this cannot access the file system of this container and so on so this functionality and this isolation is provided by what you call as this namespace functionality and this in fact is also the part of linux kernel now the reason this is important is because on a software level if you are implementing a lot of these abstractions this might become very slow right if docker is trying to do it on its own in a software related world it will almost always be slower than what you can do on a kernel level why because kernel space and user space whenever you are doing any sort of you know, any, running any sort of command, there is a context switch time which happens. The operating system jumps into a kernel level access and a user level access. You might also have heard about that in case of rings, ring zero, ring one, ring two in operating systems. But in general, what you have to understand is the, the reason this function, these functionalities exist on the kernel space is because of performance. And you can also say it in the other way that this is like really performant and really fast. It is very fast to create containers and destroy them and it is clean because this is implemented in the core of the Linux, in, in the kernel of Linux. So yeah, that's pretty much it, what Docker really does. Of course, it helps you with a ton of other things, including configuring your containers through infrastructure as a code, if you want to say it like that, setting up uh, YAML files, having nice statistics on your dashboard, or in your CLI and so on. But this is like the crux of what Docker does and containers in general do on Linux. So that is all for this video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.